Hi there, Lindsay here. Today I wanted to do a series of curriculum close-ups for you. In my first video, I shared what we were using for our first slash second grade curriculum for the year 2017-2018, but I realized it was extremely difficult to see being so far away from the camera. So I decided that I would go through and divvy out each of our subjects and show you our math, our language arts, our history, and our science as a closer up version of that video. So you can actually see the curriculum a little more clearly. This is going to be at the beginning of each of those videos. So forgive me if I am repeating myself. That, um, and so I wanted to walk you through all of what we have got for Caitlin's curriculum for her first slash second grade year. Let's take a closer look. So for language arts this year, we are going to be using first language lessons level two, writing with ease level two, spelling workout B, and handwriting by Zainer Bloser level two C. Let's get a little closer look at each of these. Last year we used Zaner Bloser handwriting level one, which was a manuscript, and level two C is the first level that you can actually get cursive in. And the Zaner Bloser is extremely colorful, and, um, and that got a little distracting for Caitlin last year. They go through in this, and they have the first unit where you're just doing a review of manuscript writing, so printing. And they go through and they do these little keys to legibility, which are very helpful, I think, for helping your child to critically look at their handwriting and really try to make a conscientious effort to improve. And each, each unit they usually start out with a little poem, which is just kind of like a fun little thing to read through. So that is Zaner Bloser's Handwriting Level 2C. Here we have Spelling Workout Level B. And I've got the teacher's edition and then my actual student book I have gone to the print shop and had chopped up so that we could put each lesson into the file crate system, the file folders for each week. Um, and this is written by Modern Curriculum Press. And the thing we really appreciate about spelling with um, spelling workout is how intuitive it is. I do not believe you need the teacher's edition uh, in order to accomplish this curriculum effectively. Um, but for some reason, I, I just went ahead and got it. <laughs> so I don't really have any of the student pages out to show you, which was unfortunate. But in the student workbook, it does go through and it kind of gives you some, some practical steps to sorting out how to go about spelling a word. And then it gives you this writing and proofreading guide. And in each week's lesson, you do have a proofreading section where it wants you to go in and underline letters that need to be capitalized, put punctuation where it needs to go, and um, circle your the spelling mistakes they've made. And then it has you correct those. And it also has a dictionary. And it teaches you how to use a dictionary, which is extremely helpful for um, future for future usage. In the teacher's edition, this probably will be a little harder to see. So it goes through and it shows you the student pages in a very small format, but it gives you some tips on how to go about teaching each individual lesson a little more.
but it's really simple. So on our spelling lessons, what we do is we go through and Caitlin gets her lesson out and she will read through the front page of the lesson and then she will flip over that sheet and she will do the spelling practice and that will be day one of the week. Day two, she goes through and she just does these activities. Day three, she does these activities and on day four, we just go through and kind of do a little assessment to see where she's at with those words. And usually spelling takes us seven to 10 minutes. It is a super quick process for her right now. And usually they've got anywhere between, uh, I think on this, on level or level A, they always had eight spelling words. And here on level B, they've got 10 spelling words per lesson. So then you've also got another copy of the student edition um, like what they've got in their their book, workbook with the proofreading guide, the dictionary, and then it gives you just um, a, dic a sample dictionary to go through and practice how to navigate a dictionary. And at the very back, we've got a record chart and we've got some answer keys. And it tells you exactly where a list word is found, like which lesson. So if you're looking for the word opening, it's on lesson 26. And then they've got some enrichment things for the teacher to go through. And these can be some little games. They can be some ways to um, present the material on a bulletin board. How to use the dictionary is like kind of a, a drill game kind of a thing. And then this is really nice. They give you definitions and rules at the end. So that is spelling workout level B. Next we have, let's do the five or the um, first language lessons for level two. This was written by Jesse Wise, who is Susan Weisbauer's mother. This particular book is fantastic. The format is super useful to us and very helpful. So in this, It'll tell you how to use the book. It's got lessons one through 100. Each lesson is very short, very, very short. And it typically, it takes us about, again, another seven minutes or so to do this particular lesson, or the, uh, one lesson within here. Depending on if it's a picture study, it'll take us a little bit longer. If it's um, read the story and then let's discuss the story afterwards with a narration, practicing narration, that will take us a little bit longer. But just these general lessons where it gives you the explicit things to say. Everything in bold is what you speak. So a noun is the name of a person, place, thing, or idea. And then, you know, you go through and you repeat those things. So you, um, or these things are really more like definitions and explicit things they want you to ensure that your, your child understands. So you go through and you just read <laughs> and it's the most simple format that we have ever, you know, experienced with going through and doing grammar. And there's usually some supplemental activity ideas at the very end of a lesson. Um, this one, this just gives you um, like just a speaking activity to do together. Um, here we go. Here it is. Enrichment activity. You can have your child illustrate whatever poem there is. This particular lesson is about memorization. And so you memorize the poem that they've provided for you and you work on that. It'll tell you what you're gonna work on at the top of each lesson. So it'll say poem review and it'll give you what lesson that particular poem was in. And in this one, it looks like there's a copy work activity. So your child can go through and copy the sentence, one of the sentences if you want them to work on that. There's no assessment involved with first language lessons. It's all just talking together. And this is 100% reliant on teacher and student being together. This is not independent work. But like I said, it usually takes us seven to 10 minutes to get through the lessons and work on, um, work on the skills and information that is in each lesson. Here's a picture study. So this is a way to go through and just kind of help your child to understand how you could go about looking at a picture in order to appreciate it and how to really be observant when it comes to looking at 
um, artwork. Oh, perfect. Addressing an envelope. Very good information to have. So there are 100 lessons. We go through and we do three lessons per week. And then on the fourth day, we basically review whatever poems we were attempt we were working on memorizing. Gives you some a glossary for the terms and definitions they teach, and your index, and it gives you page numbers for each of the poems. First language lessons, level two. What we use is Writing with Ease, and this was written by Susan Weisbauer, and I really appreciate her approach. She goes through and she explains that in her Well-Trained Mind book that it is the skill set to sit down and write thoughts down on paper is a complicated one, and it's something that as adults we tend to just do naturally, but it took us a long time probably to figure out how to go about translating our thoughts into written form. And so her objective is she goes through and she has you read a passage of a book that she, you know, in this particular, for here, it's an Aesop's fable. And then she will go through and have you ask the students some questions to sort of help them remember the details of that particular passage. And then you go through and um, you have the child summarize the the basic concepts in that book and that's an that's an additional part that's added in in, le in level two level one they just had you go through answer the questions and then narrate and narrating is just having the child parrot back to you what they remember from that story and in the level two they're adding on the extra piece of trying to teach the child how to summarize the basic narrative in that passage and then you ask the student for a narration. And you want it to be, you don't want them to give you every single detail from start to finish to where it takes them eight minutes to go in and retell you the exact story. You really want them to learn how to pick out the key points and just tell those back to you, which is, it does take some time to develop that skill. So then on day two, instead of going through and reading another passage, you're explicitly going to do a copy work exercise. Our workbook portion of it is put into the crate file system right now, so I can't show it to you, but it's basically in the student portion has a lined piece of paper with this statement or sentence or this piece of copy work at the top, and then the child just copies it. And what copy work really does for a child is it helps them to see, okay, I capitalize the first letter of this sentence. I go through and I'm carefully making sure that each word has space between it. And at the very end, what do I notice? I notice a punctuation mark. And it really gives the child a, a pattern to follow. And it's really, really helpful whenever it comes to letting them write on their own. And then number or day three, they go through and we're going to have our first dict dictation exercise. This is a new feature for, or this is a new skill set that they introduce in level two. Level one, they do not add in dictation, but level two, they do. And so this is the very first time they're introducing it. So they give you some um, information on how to teach that or, or how to present dictation to your child. And then... On day four, they go through and they usually say, okay, read this portion of this, pa or read this passage and do narration and um, copy work. But here, it's going to be upgraded from narration and copy work to narration and dictation. So that, that is a definite um, advancement from the level one to the level two. And that's all there is to it. There are four days of work per week and they divvy it out by week. It is week one through 36.
and it follows that pattern until, well, obviously 36 is the evaluation. And it really, um, it, it's super simple to break this down. We do a 36 week school year with four week or four days per week. So we literally do one lesson per day. It usually takes us about 15 minutes to get through this portion, including Caitlin's writing time. So between this, our grammar, our spelling, and our handwriting, we are usually spending anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes total for language arts. 